Suppose G is context-free grammar. An algorithm for eliminating the lambda and unit productions from this grammar is begin by eliminating all lambda productions. For every variable, bind DA, the A derivable variables. Let our production rules start out as the original set of production rules. And for every variable in the A derivable variables, and every production rule x produces something where something is not a unit production, we'll add the rule A produces the something, and then eliminate all unit productions from our production rules. While this eliminates the all unit productions, does it produce the same language? Well, let's prove it. Let's designate our new language G1. Since every production rule in P1 is either a production rule in P or formed by condensing several production rules in P, then any string in the language of G1 must be in L of G. In other words, the language of G1 is a subset of our original language. So to show the two languages are equal, we can show that our original language is a subset of our new language. Remember, the main difference between the two is that G1 has no unit productions, while G might. Let's consider a derivation S produces alpha, where alpha is in our language. If this derivation has no unit productions, then all the production rules are in P1, and so alpha is in L of G1. So we only have to consider the possibility that it has unit productions. Since our derivation could have n equals 1, 2, 3, and so on unit productions, then an induction proof might be a good approach. So for an induction proof, our base step is easy to state. Any string whose production requires one unit production is also a string in LG1. The induction step is a little more complicated. If any string whose production requires n equals k unit productions is also a string in LG1, then any string whose production requires one more unit production is also a string in LG1. So let's prove the base case. Suppose gamma is a string whose production requires one unit production. Now, we'll assume for convenience that we're using a leftmost derivation. Then S produces gamma, includes one unit production, say A produces B. So S produces something, where we begin with a string of terminal symbols. We have our variable A, and we end with some string of terminal symbols and variables. Now, since we're using a leftmost derivation and we have our unit production A produces B, this is then going to produce something of the form alpha B beta. Now, since A produces B is the only unit production in the derivation, the next step must use a production rule of the form B produces delta, where again delta is some string of terminal symbols and variables. And from there, we can complete our derivation to produce gamma, the string in our language. Now, since A produces B is the only unit production in the derivation, then the first part uses only grammar rules in G1. The last part also only uses grammar rules in G1. And since A produces B produces delta, then G1 must include the rule A produces delta. And so this derivation only requires the grammar rules of G1, and consequently, gamma is in the language of G1. So now let's find our induction step. Suppose that all strings that can be produced using n equals k unit productions are also strings in LG1. Now suppose gamma requires k plus 1 unit productions. Now remember, if there's a first, there's a last, and so there's a last unit production, say x produces y, and so our derivation will look something along the lines of s produces alpha x beta, 
which then produces alpha y beta, where again alpha is a string of terminals, and b and delta are a string of terminals and variables. So again, since x produces y as the last unit production, and we're still assuming a leftmost derivation, our next step must be y produces delta as before, or again delta is some string of terminal symbols and variables. By construction, though, since x produces y, which produces delta, then g1 must also include the rule x produces delta. And so we can drop out that middle term, and so we can go from s to produce alpha x beta, to produce alpha delta beta, and then on to gamma. And since we've eliminated one of the unit productions, this is now a derivation with n equals k unit productions, and our induction assumption says that gamma is in Lg1. And consequently, anything that's in our original language is also in our new language, and we've simplified our grammar so that it has no lambda productions and no unit productions.